Carolina basketball trailing at halftime last night. What what happened? To me, that's not too surprising. I'm really not shocked. I'm not surprised either. Um, but people are a lot of Carolina fans yeah. are like, what's happening? Carolina, there's there's been some Carolina fans who've been, you know, they they've had their panties in a bunch this week because uh, they've str- they struggled a little bit more than okay. what some people expect against UNC Wilmington, and then they trailed at half to Charleston. Now, if you remember, they played Charleston last year. Charleston played them close last year. They also trailed in that game last year. Um, here's here's my thing. I think most people have to keep this into consideration about this mm-hmm. North Carolina Tarles basketball team. They are, in my opinion, the number one team in the nation. Sure. But number one doesn't mean that you're invincible. No. You also have to take into uh, account what last year was. Mm-hmm. Forget the last six games of the year. Yeah. Forget the last six games. What was this North Carolina basketball team? Uh, a lot of people in February were sitting there wondering, is Hubert Davis the guy? That was le- those were legit conversations so that were being had. Pretty inconsistent team, sure. And and they found their consistency a little bit in February. They mm-hmm. got really hot in March, and it's pretty much the same group of guys minus Brady Manick. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, that's the yeah, Brady Manick. Yeah, okay. I don't you know. said it right. Besides Brady Manick, so it, it's it's going to be a little bit different. And and when you think about it, a lot of why. Armando Baycott had the season he had last year. He had an amazing season. Great season. The two years before that, the paint was crowded. He had to share it with guys like Garrison Brooks and all these other Walker guys. Walker Kessler was there Walker too. Kessler, all these guys that are that were in and out, and and the paint was just absolutely crowded. Brady Manning didn't need the paint. He could step out, yeah, but he, he was an, another guy who could make plays for you. He's six foot eleven and everything like that. Now Pete Nance plays a little bit more in the paint. They have to figure out how to work with each other. It's, it's different. They, they need some time. Mm-hmm. So don't be surprised when you have good uh, mid-major programs like UNC Wilmington and, and Charleston. Give them a little bit of a run. Let's remember UNC Wilmington won the CBI last year. Let's remember their coaches, Takeo Settle, who came from NC State mm-hmm. under Kevin Keats. Kevin Keats used to coach, uh, that, coach that program, reason why he got the NC State job. And before mm-hmm. him, Brad Brownell from uh, Clemson had that same job. Yeah. UNC Wilmington is a good mid-major. Yeah, they are. Charleston is a good mid major. You're gonna get guy you're gonna get those teams to push you a little bit. They got challenged in those first two games, but it was the challenge of Hubert Davis to his team at halftime that was really revealing. We were soft in the first half. Um, we were soft at parts against UNC Wilmington and on both ends of the floor. And there's a physicality that has to be brought. Okay, so soft. Soft. <laughs> <laughs> S-A-W-F-T soft. He, call, he called him soft at halftime. Yeah, he called him soft at halftime. Challenged his guys, and the guys responded. With Baycott, you mentioned during our raise-up top five, had, what, 27 points in the second half? Yeah, he had one point in the first half. Yeah, one point in the first half, yeah. 27 in the second half. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a response, which is what you would expect from a veteran team like that. That is one number one in the country. So, good response by them. Don't press the panic button, people. It's two games. Yeah. And here's the thing as well. I always say this about teams as well. It's like, yeah, you want to bank wins, obviously, at this point in the season. But you're trying to grow and evolve as the season goes along. So you are playing your best basketball in March exactly. like UNC did last year. You don't want to peak early. This is a different sport, but you don't want to peak early last year like the Hurricanes did. Yeah. Hurricanes it started the season, applies. what, 9-0? Yeah, still applies. And, and, and still, like, they were really high, and then they started, like, towards the end of the year, like, mm-hmm. ticking down, and we saw it happen in the playoffs. Exactly. You want to be building up towards March. Yeah. Look, the team's going to be just fine. You were at NC State last night. You yep. were at PNC Arena as they took on Campbell yesterday. Anything interesting that you saw from this this NC State team? Because we've seen a lot of roster turnover over the last few years. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a far cry from what we see with UNC with four of their starters returning. Yeah, Traquavion Smith, you know, a couple other guys are back, Jarkel Joyner. But I don't know. The roster turnover for NC State seems to continue to Turnover year after year. What did you see from the pack last night at PNC? It's a lot of turnover there, but uh, Tequavion Smith is is the legit star of that team for sure. Um, Jarkel Joiner, he's a, he's a great addition, I mm-hmm. think, to help uh, you know keep the pace of the of the game. Uh, NC State, I think, it's really good on defense. They'll get some stuff together. The person who really stood out to me though okay. is DJ Burns. Okay, now DJ Burns is is a big guy. Like he's he's hefty. He's not. He doesn't have the body of a basketball player. He looks like he could be a defensive end. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Is he related but, to Brian? But Brian I, Burns? I don't know. But but he he has touch. And in the first half, 
every time he got the ball in the paint, it felt like something good came from it, whether he scored or he was able to pass it out to somebody else. He has good vision, he has good touch, and he has great moves for for a big man. Mm -hmm. Uh, You could tell he's going to get winded, though. He could probably only play in like maybe five, six-minute spurts, and he's going to have to sit out for a little bit and come back. But he came from Winthrop, another good mid major. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but he uh, he looked good. Uh, and then also, I, I think that um, I hope I'm saying his name right, Dushan Mahorich. Mahorich. Okay. I think he'll end up being pretty good. Uh, he's also another transfer that came in. I want to say LaSalle. They had a lot yeah, of LaSalle. transfers that yep. came in. Um, and then Jarkel Joyner came in from Ole Miss. So they, they have some good additions. The team is small, however. Mm-hmm. So against a bigger team like Duke and, and Carolina, I don't know. Yeah. But if, if they can keep the defense on and make their outside shots, NC State will probably look pretty good this year. Okay. I mean, they might be a tournament team this year, to be determined. But yeah. I think Keats needs to make the tournament. I think NC State needs to make yeah. needs to be playing in March in meaningful basketball games. I know Grant mentioned earlier he was out at Duke last night. They blew out South Carolina upstate. Like, it wasn't even fair. And on the other end, where we talked about Carolina fans not being too upset at their team right now, yeah. Duke has had two blowout wins to start oh, the season. Yeah. Don't get too high if you're a Duke fan right now. Sure. Because, you know, even though Jacksonville is decent on their level, USC upstate, eh, little, little okay. Yeah. You, th- once you get real competition like Kansas, that's going to look different. 